Good morning, beautiful ladies of the Art of Conscious Relating Masterclass. How are we doing this morning? I woke up this morning with quite a strong urge, desire to come and speak to you uh, one last time in this group. And I wanted to share with you a good morning, Hazel. I wanted to share with you a message that came through from Tim Wilde. Hello, Carrie. Good morning. I'm not sure if any of you follow Tim Wilde, but he does these incredible Ascension updates every Friday. Hello, Hazel. And um, he did an Ascension update on the Equinox. Hello, Belinda. He did an Ascension update on the Equinox and he said something at 16 minutes into the transmission that made me stop in my tracks. And I said to myself, I need to make a mental note of when and where I heard this so that I can come back to it and transcribe it. And the reason I've come on this morning, or one of the reasons I've come on this morning is because I wanna share it with you because the transmission that came through Tim on the Equinox mirrors so beautifully the energetic work that we have been doing together in this masterclass container. So I'm going to read for you in a couple of moments the transmission, and I think you'll probably see why I felt compelled to come on and share it. And before I get into that, I'm very curious to know, hello, Alicia Keys, Alicia Keys. Every time I see Alicia, I'm like, Alicia, 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 Alicia. <laughs> My brain's like, it takes a minute for me to process how to pronounce it. Um, what I'm super curious about this morning is how are you getting on with these masterclasses? Have you had time to watch them? Because as you know, they come down midnight tonight. There was the art of conscious relating one where I described the interaction between the couple on the bus. That was the first one. Let me know if you've watched that one. And I gave you a reframe on how that conversation could have gone completely differently if they'd had the ability to use the conscious communication tools, right? That was the first one. Then we looked at the drama triangle. That one's fucking brilliant if I do say so myself. And I had the slides where I was showing you how we pivot positions between the rescuer, the persecutor and the victim. That was the second one. Let me know if you've seen it. And the third one was the boundaries one, right? Where we looked at both sides of the boundaries coin, i.e. where the boundaries are leaky and we need to tighten them up. And where the boundaries are very rigid because our own inner parent, who is carrying a lot of fear from our own parents, is still keeping us on a very fucking tight leash. And we're not living life nearly as fully as we could be if we had a more conscious relationship with that inner parent and we got them to loosen the reins a little bit. So Hazel's doing all the thumbs up. So I think that means that Hazel's seen all of them, which is amazing. Belinda, you've seen one and two. So you've got today to watch the third one. Anyone who's watching this now, who's thinking, I really, really wanted to see those masterclasses, but I've missed them or I've missed one of them or I've joined the group late and they're coming down tonight and I'm panicking and I'm freaking out because I wanted to see them. Reach out to me today. Message me today. Give me an update. Let me know. Let me know where you're up to. Let me know if I can support you in any way, if you've slightly run out of time, but you really want to watch them. Uh, Alicia's saying, I'm, I'm, I'm in practicing. I'm in practicing life. <laughs> Your codes are gold. Thank you. I agree. They are very potent. And that is a word that's come up a lot, actually, in this, in this container. A lot of people have responded and saying this is gold. And it is gold. And I'm so, so glad that you are in my world, embracing, embracing, <laughs> and that you are able to walk this, this leg of this path with me. We're able to do it together because these are choppy times, my friends, and we need support like this. And we need to know that there's other women doing similar work, right? And one of the things that I want to share this morning that I think affects a lot of us 
is this one of like, there's nearly a hundred of us in this group, right? There's quite a lot of people who've, who've joined this masterclass, which is incredible. And sometimes we, or you might think that you don't matter or that it doesn't matter to me if you're here or you're not here, or I haven't seen you, or I might not even know your name. This is the inner child, right? The one that's afraid to take up space, the one that thinks that she's not seen and she's not important and she's not acknowledged. And I just want you to know that every single one of you matters to me. I know all of your names and I know all of your essences, even if we don't know each other personally, some of us know each other really well personally and some of you have come to this space brand new. But I just want you to know that every single one of you matters to me. I see you. I know you're here. I don't always know how you're getting on with the materials unless you talk with me. But please know that you matter, that I really care how you're getting on. And that I would love you to either message in this, you know, you can comment in this thread or you can reach out to me personally. Let me know where you're at. Let me know where you're stuck. Let me know if I can support you in some way. But talk to me and know that you matter and know that by sharing with me, you are actually letting me know and you are building your confidence to speak. You're building your confidence to say, hello, I'm here. I have a voice. Right. And I trust that I matter to you. And I trust that my presence here matters because it does. Because when all of us come together like this, nearly a hundred women have come together in this space with me to look at this whole area of conscious communication. And when you get nearly a hundred women focused energetically on the same work, even if not all of you have been able to do every masterclass, even if with the best of intentions, life's got in the way. I just want you to know that the very fact that you're here matters. It amplifies the frequency of what we're doing. It creates a hive mind. It creates a hyper mind. And when we create a hyper mind where a hundred minds are focused on the same thing, something energetically opens that's incredibly powerful. And you, you personally have contributed to that. And I exactly, Paula saying nearly a hundred goddesses all together in this space. It's fucking powerful. And I'm incredibly honored that you've come. And I'm incredibly honored that you have the courage to even begin to do this work. We have been trained since childhood, right? That we hide our feelings, that we suppress our voice, that we don't take up too much space, that we prioritize other people's needs and feelings above our own, that we keep our triggers to ourselves, and then we reach a point where we can't cope anymore and then we explode on the other person and then we don't speak and then there's an angry silence and then we somehow make up and then we get back on the wheel but we never really address what's going on at the root right? This is the conditioning. This is the template that we've been shown. You, you have your personality. You keep your guard up with people. You don't let people know what's really going on for you because it's vulnerable and it's scary. And it's scary to speak your truth in case people don't like it or in case people don't respond well or in case you get punished in some way on the other side of that, right? So we've been heavily conditioned to suppress all of that and just somehow mold ourselves into a version of ourselves that we think is acceptable to other people, right? And it ends up becoming a very small, restrictive and edited version of who we are. Because who we are is so much bigger than how we are allowing ourselves to express. Does that make sense? We are so much bigger and we are so much more colourful and we are so much more powerful than we allow people to see and that we even allow ourselves to acknowledge because it's scary and there's a lot of fear around stepping more radically and more fully into our truth and our light and our magnetism and who we really are. Yeah. 
So the very fact that you're here and the very fact that you are having this conversation with me now means that you are an energetic match for this very courageous work. Reverse Russian doll. <laughs> Can you explain a little bit more? You mean that, yeah, we're smaller than we think we are, exactly. So the very fact that you're here and that you're willing to engage with the possibility of stepping more radically into your truth and who you really are is phenomenal. You are a way shower. You are a powerful woman because you're in this conversation. And I want you to know that. I really, really want you to know that. This is the hero's journey, is to let go of all the things that are keeping us small or let go of all of the things that are keeping us inauthentic or a smaller version of who we really are. But it takes a lot of courage. And it's time. You can feel it, right? You can feel it in your bones that it's time to do this work, this return to sovereignty. So with that in mind, I'm going to share with you the um, message that came through from Tim Wilde's Ascension Update. Tim Wilde is a spiritual teacher. He has a lot of um, connections with the Archangels, Raphael, Gabrielle. He gets loads of incredibly powerful transmissions, all related to the Ascension process that we're going through currently as a collective. Okay, so... This is what came through in Tim's transmission, which matches so powerfully with what we've been doing in this container. He said, one of the hardest things on the ascension pathway is to stand in your light, your truth and your integrity when you are faced with a sea of opposing souls. Your mission now is to have the courage and the integrity to stand in your truth knowing in your heart that you are speaking words of truth and love and light and you are acting out of integrity. We are regaining our voices en masse. We are regaining our ability to speak from the throat chakra via the heart. The energy of the 5D heart is ready to merge with the energy of the 5D throat. So the two work in harmony. One does not speak words without first engaging the heart. And that ensures that what we bring forth is filled with love and the vibration of truth. It might not necessarily be what other people want to hear, but it resonates at a frequency that strikes a chord that has the vibration of truth running through it. And when those words are spoken and when those actions are taken, the rest of the world or the environment around it reforms to vibrate at that frequency. This is a process of alchemy that's happening now, but it requires souls that are grounded, strong and centred in their hearts, their truth and their integrity to bring this forth now. Can you feel the power in those words? Can you feel the power in, in that transmission? That the next level of this ascension process is reconnecting the heart chakra and the throat chakra so that the two start working in synchronicity. And right now, for most people, that is not happening yet, is it? But this is the beginning of this tidal wave of change. And to do that, to, to engage the throat chakra and the heart simultaneously, what that requires of us is, first and foremost, that we are connected with our own hearts, right? Like, we, if we are not connected with our own hearts... How can we possibly speak words into the collective field which carry that, that, that harmonizing frequency? We can't. So the first step is that connection with our own hearts, our own feelings, our own emotions, our own truth, our own sense of self. Like this is the first step. 
And a lot of people, when they start to try and play with conscious communication tools, which in and of itself is very admirable, even trying is incredibly admirable because it's, it's hard. A lot of the times people come up against a sticking point where they're like, well, I've kind of followed some sort of methodology. Like I've said sorry for my part in it and I've, I've acknowledged what they've said and I've tried to be really reasonable and I've expressed my truth and it, it, it just, the other person became aggressive or the other person didn't want to listen, right? And we get very confused about why that's happening because seemingly we're following the conscious communication steps. But the magic missing ingredient is the connection to our own heart because that is the thing that helps us to transcend this frequency of othering people and making the other person wrong or making the other person to blame or feeling to blame ourselves or you know sometimes we go both ways don't we but either which way when we are really anchored into the heart like there is no more blame there is no more shaming there is no more fear it's simply like it's a freedom. It creates a freedom so that we can begin to relate to people, sovereign being to sovereign being. And for many of you, like you may not fully really know what I mean when I say that, because it's definitely something that has to be experienced to be fully embodied. But I can tell you that like my relationships used to be very transactional, you know, like in friendships or in romantic relationships or with my parents, it was very much like, I'll play this role for you. I'll be like the good girl or I'll be the reliable friend or I'll be the dutiful daughter or I'll be whatever role you want me to be so that you don't abandon me, so that you don't fall out with me, so that I get to still have a sense of belonging and connection with you. But all of that was driven by fear. All of that was driven by the fear of abandonment or the fear of saying something that they, that they won't like or the fear of upsetting people. And those fears are never ending. Those, those fears are never ending if we are operating from that frequency. And the reason we're operating from that frequency with these transactional ways of relating to other people is because the pact we made in childhood was, I will sacrifice my sense of sovereignty. I will sacrifice my own self-leadership and my own intuition and everything else that's guiding me internally. I will sacrifice that in exchange for love and belonging, in exchange for doing what my parents want me to do, doing what my teacher wants me to do, doing what whoever wants me to do, doing what my partner wants me to do, so that they won't exile me, so that they won't <laughs> abandon me. But that fear of that abandonment is never ending. And, we, and it will always make us a slave. We will always be a slave to that fear because we're only ever one word away or one action away from triggering the other person and then risking being alienated from them. Do you see what I'm saying? So we end up becoming a complete slave to that fear. And ultimately, when we transcend all that, what emerges the other side of transcending that fear and that guilt, which compels us to keep taking ourselves out of alignment in order to please other people. When we transcend that, what lies on the other side of that is the most incredible relationships with people. This is the irony. This is the irony of this work, is that when we're willing to let go of everything and everyone in order to truly honor our truth, our relationships become so clean, you know, like they become absolutely pristine because we're no longer making it anyone else's job to fulfill our needs. We're no longer responding to other people out of guilt and shame and fear. We're no longer, you know, relating in this transactional way. And the other side of that is freedom for yourself, freedom for the other people in your life to show up for each other out of desire, out of love, out of generosity, rather than out of the opposite, opposite frequencies. 
Belinda's saying completely where I was at. Hazel's saying, I've done a lot of heart-centered spiritual work, but putting it into practice in relationships has been problematic. Yeah. And a few of you have been um, speaking to me over the last few days. We've had some video calls and people have been voice noting me and things like that. And some of the things that some of you have been sharing with me are along the lines of like, having a feeling a strong feeling inside your body that like now is the time to really do this work to really develop a completely different way of relating that feels clean and authentic and transparent and nourishing and loving and honest and brave and a couple of you have been saying like i know that now's the time for this but I know I need a guide. I know I know I can't do it on my own or I know that I need someone to support me and show me the way. And that is what I am here for. That is exactly what I'm here for. I'm here to guide you every step of the way over the next 10 weeks. We are going to be working with every different conceivable aspect of conscious communication and boundary work. You get to bring to me all the stuff that you are working on in your own relationships. And by the way, as soon as you step into these containers with me, the universe will start to give you so much material in your relationships that we can use within the sanctity of the container to use as transformational real life scenarios that we can work with, right? And that's the thing is that when we work together in these containers, especially a 10 week one, the version of you that comes into that container is going to be a completely different version than the one that comes out the other side. When you come out the other side of that 10 weeks with me, you are going to have a completely different relationship to yourself. A completely different relationship to speak in your truth. A completely different relationship to the power of you articulating your boundaries crystal clear and feeling and trusting that other people are going to respond to that in a completely different way because you will be radiating a different frequency around it because we're going to clean up all of the beliefs that you're still holding on to that are telling you that it's not okay for you to do that. Does that make sense? All the parts of you that are still telling yourself, I'm not allowed to be that radically honest. I'm not allowed to be that radically me. <laughs> but you are. And it's time. And when you do it for yourself, you do it for the collective. When you do it for yourself, you start to model to other people how it's done. And one person at a time gets deprogrammed from all of these beliefs that are keeping us in this very dense 3D reality that we are now naturally beginning to ascend from anyway. But we need the guidance, we need the structures, we need the conscious attention on this work so that we can move to the next level. This life is like a computer game. The universe will keep giving you the same sticky situations with people, the same crossed wires with people, the same fears of being abandoned by people, the same fears of being judged by people. The universe will just keep giving you more and more of the same shit <laughs> until you say to yourself, do you know what? I've kind of had enough of operating at this level of the computer game. Too much of my time and emotional energy is getting bled out of me, trying to deal with these sticky dynamics with people, and I'm ready to move beyond that. If you want to really be someone who's making a difference in this ascension process, if you want to be someone that other people can calibrate to at that slightly elevated frequency, this work has to be done. This work cannot be bypassed. This work is essential. And the other side of this work is so much freedom and so much more light that can come through you as you step more radically into your truth. So <clears throat> several of you have decided in the last 24 hours that you want to do this journey with me. Some of you might still be feeling a bit like I'm not sure. And your mind is a clever instrument, by the way. 
So the mind is the soul. The soul feels when it is being called to do a particular process, right? Like a, a particular upgrading process. Your soul will be called to it like a magnet. But the mind is really, really clever in trying to keep you safe. Okay. So your soul might think, oh my gosh, this sounds amazing. I would love to experience what she's talking about. That sounds ideal to be able to transcend that, that place of freedom with other people and that place of truth. But then the mind comes in and says, well, 10 weeks is a long time. Don't think I've got that much time. Or the mind comes in and says, Ooh, two sessions a week, one masterclass, one group session a week. That's quite a lot. Don't think I've got time. The mind will find reasons to tell you why this is not possible. The mind is very clever. The mind is there to protect you. And often when people jump on a call with me and they say, I'm really interested. I'm just not sure if I've got time. What I always say to people is, this is nothing to do with time. This is not a time commitment. This is an energetic commitment. This is very, very different to perceiving it as a time commitment. This is the mind. The mind is working in a very narrow field of awareness. It's just like two day, you know, two times a week, one hour, blah, blah, blah. It's trying to conceptualize everything in a very limited way. The time is irrelevant. What's relevant is the energetic commitment to have the courage to really take a deep look at your relating style and your relationships and your way of communicating who you are, what you believe, how you feel and what your truth is and to elevate yourself to the next level of radical authenticity. That's the commitment. People always on these kinds of programs. Some people are there for every single session with bells on and they journal every single you know week and they do all the homeworks and everything. Some people show up as much as they can, but they've got a busy life and they miss a few here and there and they catch them up or they don't. It really doesn't matter so much at all about that. What matters is that you decide you're energetically there and you're energetically making yourself available for the work. When you do that, the universe takes care of the rest and the parts of the program that you are meant to get, the parts that are meant to land, the shifts that you are meant to experience within my containers will happen. That requires you to trust the quantum field, the universe, which is always supporting you with these upgrades when you make yourself available for them. Does it make sense? The other thing that the mind is brilliant at saying, I can't do that because is money. Yeah, and I know that one because I've done it many times myself where I said, I'd love to, but it's just the money. The thing with me is that I am super like open to doing gentler payment plans for people who are like, I know I want to do it. I just need it to work for me in a way that I can do it monthly that's manageable. I am super open to that. If I feel that the person is energetically in and I can feel that from people when I know that they are ready for the work and they show up radically, but they just need a four month plan instead of a three one. I'm absolutely cool with that. That doesn't matter to me at all. What matters to me is the energetic. Yes. The details we can do later. For some of you, it's a case of I really want to do it don't get paid till next week, literally don't know how I could make the first payment. So what I've done for a couple of people is I've said, if you want to do a deposit of a hundred before midnight tonight, because that's the cutoff point for the pre-sale on this conscious relating program, you can put a hundred down today to secure your space. And the spaces are filling by the way that, you know, three or four people have booked on in the last 24 hours and several had already booked on before then. So the spaces are moving. But if you know you want to do it and you just want to make sure you can secure your space today, you just need to put 100 down. The space is yours. And then we work out a plan for the remaining balance. So it's not even a thing, really. And as far as 10 weeks, we do three weeks where we focus deeply on the conscious communication. Then we have an integration week. 
We do three weeks where we work on both sides of the boundary stuff and we, we work on plugging up where your boundaries are leaky and you're losing energy and you're struggling to say no to people in a way that they can receive. I'm going to give you all the tools for that. And then we work on the opposite side where we get to be very playful and we're going to do loads of really fun structures for the second aspect of the boundaries work where I'm going to support you to feel safer, to say yes more to all the opportunities, relationships, experiences and all the things that want to show up for you, but which you are unconsciously blocking because you are afraid of stepping more into your yes. We're going to work with all of that on the second half of the boundary side. Then we're going to have another integration week, let it all settle. And then the final two weeks is called a seat at the table. And that's where I help you to get absolutely crystal clear on who are the people in your life that you are allowing into your inner sanctum? What is the criteria for you for people to get a seat at the table in your life? I'm going to help you to get crystal clear on that, crystal clear on what you desire and crystal clear on how you uphold that so that the people that start to appear in your life are a vibrational match for the version of you now, because you are not the same version of yourself as you were 5, 10, 20 years ago. But sometimes we don't upgrade the people and it's really important to keep doing that. It doesn't mean that we can't maintain relationships with people that we've known for a long time. Of course we can. But what I find is the more I'm ascending into my power, my self-leadership, my goals, my dreams, everything that I am manifesting for myself, I find it incredibly important to surround myself with other people who are doing similar things. So a seat at the table is all about how to surround yourself with the people who believe in you, who see your power, who can hold you in your vulnerability, so that you can start to enjoy next level relationships in your life, the ones that you really deserve to have. And then we have a celebration at the end where you get to be the queen appointing your royal council. More on that for the people who are stepping onto the program with me. But it's, it truly is a life changing program. And I know sometimes these words can get overused and sometimes they get overused in contexts where, you know, they're not entirely d worthy of those of those terms. But this Art of Conscious Relating program is truly a life changing program. And it is my absolute honour to bring this program to you. And the pre-sale on it is the price, which is I think an extraordinary offer. Three, three, three times three for a program of this caliber that has the power to change the way you relate to people for life is a freaking bargain. So if you know you want in, or even if you think you might, but you've got questions, my inbox is open today, all day. I can jump on a 20 minute, 30 minute call with you if there's anything you want to talk through, if there's anything you're worried about, if you're afraid of something, if you want to clarify something, I'm here to support you in all the ways. And if you know it's right for you, give me a call or just drop me a DM and we can move from there. And I want to say to all of you, please know that showing up for this work, even just the masterclass is absolutely huge. And I energetically bow to every single one of you for making this a priority and choosing to be in this space. And if any of you once again have joined the group late, you've missed one of the masterclasses, you know they're coming down tonight at midnight and you're panicking because there's one you really want to see, just message me, let me know where you're up to and then we can, we can go from there and see if there's a way that I can support you to see whichever ones you might have missed, okay? So I shall look forward to hearing from you later on today. Thank you so, so much for joining me this morning for this little impromptu pop-up share and I will talk to you very soon, I hope.